Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to Gladshire. We are with two, in fact, conquerors. The Tier 9 British Heavy Tank and one of my favourite ones, favourite Heavy Tanks in the entire game for <laughs> versatility as well as the ability to be an all-round all-round a powerhouse at what it does. It has the best ready to fire with a 122mm calibre gun and the higher at tier 9 and that is where the brutality of the Conqueror, Conqueror really shines in its ability to just let down its opponents with this astonishing gun. It really is a beautiful vehicle indeed. We're going to talk about that later. What I want to establish at the start of this game as we're rolling out of the cap circle here is two things. One, that we are in quite a difficult match here. Although it may statistically be a 50 20 percenter, we have a very skilled platoon on the enemy team in some very dangerous tanks. E100, IS4, Object 260. All in a platoon, I mean, that is, that is a tall order. And the other thing that I wanted to establish is the objective of the gameplay. As always, I want to have an objective to try and keep my commentary on track. Now, I found it difficult to establish an objective when thinking about reviewing this game because uh, a lot of the movements that I make are very specific to this game. So what I eventually decided the objective would have to be is behaviours based around a base, base cap. When you have got pressure on the enemy cap specifically, how that should affect your playstyle. And it's difficult for me to say you should do this in all cases because, I mean, uh, cap circles are just so vastly different from map to map. But we're going to look at kind of mentality and more what you should be thinking. Uh, hopefully things that aren't based too much on the lay of the land or what tank you're in. Just some thought exercises to try and get you to know your way around defending your cap circle to the best of your ability. Now, we start off at the start of this game, me and... Um, me and Poodle, and I think Jada comes over here eventually, I'm not sure. But we start heading off to the heavy tank engagement, despite our better judgement. Um, the one thing that I did realise in this game that I was telling um, Poodle as we, as we rolled out here, is that... Despite the fact that they are in very powerful heavy tanks, I looked at the layout of our team and I especially looked at the tanks that were coming with us and I decided numerically, if not statistically, we have an advantage over them. Say what you like about these guys being very skilled players, they are only three tanks and other than them, the enemy have an E75, an M103, a T10. Uh, and we have E100, IS7, IS7, T125, two Conquerors, uh, me and Poodoo are both very skilled respectively, and an M103. We have a lot more to fight this engagement than they do. And so I think even with them over there working together as a platoon, we can work to outplay them with the sheer number of forces that we're going to have going this way. Well, that's why I was so keen to go with our team and support them here. And say so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of stopping and saying to Poodle, no, we, we, we've we got to go, we've got to push forward and capitalise on this numerical advantage that we have. Now, why do I love the Conqueror specifically? Well, as I said, it's versatility. We'll talk about the armour and we'll talk about the gun. Now, this tank never boasted in hull armour. It has 130 at the front. 50 out the side, that overmatch uh, system can take place with 150mm caliber guns and higher on this side of this British heavy tank, you can get it easily overmatched due to it being 50 and not 51. So, 130 at the front, but that only extends to the upper plate. The lower plate of this tank is 76mm thick and at a very negligible angle, meaning the lower plate of the Conqueror is absolute paper. But it's all rel relative due to the fact that that 130mm of frontal hull armor, flat like that, will probably get you about... 180 millimeters of armor on the upper plate of this vehicle, which at tier 9 is not anything. It is pretty much paper. You are going to be able to pen the upper plate of the Conqueror 
with 200 millimeters or pen reliably as long as there is no angle in it and most tanks that are going to be shooting at you will sport more than 200 millimeters of pen so hull armor is really not what the conch is about what the conch is about is using its seven degrees of gun depression and its 254 millimeters of frontal tunnel armor to put that in perspective here 254 millimeters combined with this astonishing angle on the front and if you imagine working that with seven degrees of gun depression Look at that. That is phenomenal. That is distinctly British right there. As we remember from our, uh, my review of the Centurion Axe, British tanks, they love to be above their opponents and harass them using that. And that also gives the conch another advantage. Now, some people are a fan of the idea that this is an overmatch engine. It's not. Guess how thick it is? It is 50. One millimeters. Of course it would be. They don't want it to be overmatched by 50 millimeter guns. But that said, if you're sitting there in a high tier American TD with a 155, shoot all day at this because you will overmatch this armor and you'll get one very pissed off conquering player as a result of it. Now, this Capola is something that's very difficult and I like to point this out every time I do a gameplay review in the conk. To pen this Capola, you have to hit here, this flat bit of armor, because this, above this line, this is an automatic ricochet. And especially, sir, if the Conqueror is using his gun depression, which he should be, and being above you, that is an automatic ricochet. And so this Capola is not only a weak spot, unless you can get a pinpoint shot into this 114 millimeters of armor that is on this flat bit whatsoever. Uh, this flat bit here, but... That is so, so damn hard to hit. Look at that. How can you aim at that part of armor? How can you avoid hitting this auto bounce angle, especially seven degrees of gun depression? It gets harder and harder and harder and harder to hit that. And that is the power of the Conqueror. Now, combine that with 5.71 rounds per minute with this uh, 120mm gun. Let's Let's compare that to the Conk's biggest competitor at the tier, which I suggest would be the M103. It's kind of the same kind of idea of a heavy tank, a combination between Chang armor and hull armor. It's kind of a hybrid between the two, the M103. But the M103 only puts out 5.36 rams per minute. Now, now that's got 258mm pen, Conk's got 259 that has 0.37 accuracy on the M103, Conk has 0.33. M103 has a 2.3 second aim time, the Conk has 1.9 seconds. There is no capacity in which the Conqueror does not beat the M103, other than a couple of minuscule and, and overlookable, if that's a word, differences. And one of the reasons why I don't like the M103 in comparison, uh, I'll say that, I will emphasize that really, because in comparison to the Conqueror, there's no reason to play an M103. The M103 has 40mm of talent on farmer, meaning it will be overmatched, it has an easily pendable Capola, and that 10 degrees of gun depression does nothing to stop its target getting overmatched, because that Capola is so tall, the M103 really cannot compare hold down to a Conqueror, and that is heavily disappointing about the vehicle. Now, mobility-wise, they are about the same. Uh, transverse speed on the Conk is 26, whereas on the M103 it is 28. Uh, Challenge Converse is a little better on the Conk. Uh, view range is 400 on... I think it's on both vehicles. I'm, I'm not sure off the top of my head. The M103 might be 390, but you know what? I won't go into huge detail about the fine stats of the tank, because I only want to get down to the the combat in this gameplay because right now we're expecting a hell of a fight up here a fight with all these tier 10 heavies and the annoying thing about Lanarkshire is that the northern spawn has a disadvantage in the heavy tank combat now why is that let's take a look at why that's the case uh, my cannon is going off <laughs> okay so, the reason that the northern spawn has a disadvantage is because if you are spawning at the south in a tank with uh, good gun depression, 
Let's put you in a T125 with 8, or an E75 with 8, a ST1 with 8, a Conk with 7. You can go here, and you can use the lav line to go hold down and put out shots on this corner. And you will have a many time, you will have a swell day, you will kill the enemy team. However, if you try and do that, on the opposite side, as this M103 has found out, if you take a position here, which is the equal position to the enemy's position over here, then you will get shot to hell from that hill there. And that is why the Northern team have a disadvantage in this heavy tank engagement, because the southern team have a much bigger capacity to hold your forces here by putting tanks hold down back here and tanks up there than you do. That That is just, that's an unbalanced map. That It's as simple as that. And so that's something that I was discussing with my platoon mates as I loaded it into this game, that that, that could potentially cause us a disadvantage. But it's at this point that we notice that the object 260 is spotted on the other flank and so we start, start thinly crafting that the entire platoon must be there and even if they're not we know that we have a numerical advantage on this side. Now let's just discuss a very very important thing about Lineshire. Seeing that 1.9 second aim time coming in handy there. Lineshire is a very difficult map for attacking if you don't know what you're doing. It is very important when you win the heavy tank engagement not to YOLO into open fields in Lanarkshire because what, let's give an example, what I would do in this situation, let's say I had a platoon of two, let's, let's outplay all these tanks here with a platoon of two, shall we? What I would do is I would send one person back here to these bushes, maybe an object 140 or something. Send an object 140 back here to these bushes. And then I would have my good self and whoever else fancied it up in these bushes right here. And that right there is om nom nom for all of these media. I mean, just the shots that you get from this position, if you just put one target, one, one tank in a bush there, you will be able to rip them limb from limb from this position. And that's the key about a child, when you're attacking from a heavy tank engagement. You never want to move out into the open, you want to move to the next point of cover as quickly as possible. So when you're attacking from north to south, do not attack over the open there, do not attack in that open land, you want to attack as soon as possible, get into the cover of these houses, because that gives you cover from the hills there and then you can think about making an engagement and the best thing to do once you've won this heavy tank flank is to close the distance in these houses not go for the base which is one of the most open things in the history of the world do not go for the base go through these buildings all the way from here and voila you've closed the distance to the enemy team without ever exposing yourself to their fire and then you can come up under them and you can start spotting them and digging them out without taking a load of long distance fire from targets that you cannot see. Now it works the same way on the other side attacking from south to north although not as much of a disadvantage um, getting spotted in this area. It becomes crippling once you try and attack around this corner so never do it from south to north. What you want to do from winning this flank is come in this low ground there, exploit these hills and take them all the way, all the way, all the way along here, all the way along here and voila, you've closed the distance to an engagement where you can get cover from the houses, you can move up under the guns of the enemy and close the distance to them without getting shot at long distance by targets that you can't see. Those are the measures for attacking on Lineshire. And at this point we know, again with our numerical advantage, that we really do need to be pushing this flank. You can see our teammates bouncing APCR shells off our asses there. I'm not sure who that was. I, I, I can't afford to be waiting here. Our, our entire team can't afford to be waiting here. At this point everyone decides, okay, 
That's it, we're going in. And this is one hell of a heavy tank push. You don't get this often, and you know, I've got to have a decent amount of respect for this team. Usually, it would be me that's pushing forward, but look at this. This is synergy in a random team, and this was just absolutely fantastic to see. And to be honest, the only reason why we this worked is because we all did it at the same time. I'm sure you can easily imagine what could very well have happened here, and that is that each and every one of these heavy tanks goes out one by one into the open, gets spotted by these targets, and shot to hell by this Object 140 and AMX-30B, which have, as you can see, being the good players that they are, they've relocated into this position in anticipation of us blatantly and stupidly exposing ourselves on the side here as we attack their forces. The only reason this worked <laughs> in <laughs> any capacity is because we all did it together. You know, we, we just went in, we threw caution to the wind. And <laughs> just the sheer number of forces was too much for the enemy. At this point, I'm telling Poodle, do not stop, do not stop, do not stop. We need to get to those houses, and I'm not... <laughs> I'm not stopping from the second year. I know my objective. I know I have to get in cover before I can even think about engaging the forces here. And so I get myself into a defensive position, as I talked about earlier, using the cover of these houses so that I am not exposed to the enemy medium tank fire, which all these guys are. They are pushing in a terrible position. And you can, you can imagine if I had been in this game, I would have had a tank there, as I said earlier, and just, can you imagine, Object 140, AMX-30B? E100 is dead, IS-7 loses the vast majority of his health, M103 is dead, that's three enemy heavy tanks would have been gone by having a position, having a medium tank, using this lunch line to spot, and play defensively and spotting for their team that would have been basically our game over but the enemy didn't do that and they stuck to their position on the hills now i am hoping it against hope that my team will push in a smart position that they will push through these buildings and as i said attempt to close the distance to the enemy and get under them without exposing themselves to fire but, this game wouldn't be much fun if they were going to do that, and as we well know, we're talking about how you can play and how your playstyle can change when you are capping the enemy base. And Poodle is saying everyone has to cap now, and from... I can see his point of view very easily. The enemy are closing in on our cap circle, but the thing is, these kind of players, and respect to them for it, because I have exactly the same mentality, they don't like to win a game by capping. No one likes to win a game by capping unless they have to. And so, the enemy most likely aren't going to cap here, and we have Jade Egg back there, who's got out uh, very early, he identified that he had to get out of the flank when he did. And he's relocating to this hill here in an anticipation of the enemy attacking the cap circle. So I have a great amount of confidence that the enemy aren't really going to flood our cap. However, I do see on the map at this point, I see that all of our forces are attacking into this flat, open cap circle where they get no cover whatsoever. They are all going to drive straight into it and sit there against enemy mediums. Now, this is this is not a maneuver specific to caps. You should always think about the lay of the land. You know what you want to be doing is putting yourself. If you if you need to take an aggressive position, this is so difficult to explain, but. You can take aggressive positions as long as you have adequate fire support, and in an open map like this, ridge lines with your team on the side at distance are a fantastic opportunity. So let's see if we can get some good examples, shall we? Ah, oh, god damn it, camera!
Okay, beautiful, we got it to work. So I was talking about uh, the Grunge Line mentality, or the Grunge Line idea. And that is, at a very basic principle, I'm just going to give an example here. If there are tanks infesting this Grunge Line, let's say there's, there's 15 TDs all over this Grunge Line, light tanks, whatever, there's, there's a bunch of people here. It is far better to have 14 of your vehicles, uh, don't think about view range or distance, it's just for thought exercise. It is far better to have 14 of your vehicles sit here and one vehicle go up under their guns than it is to have 14 vehicles push up, or well, let's say 6 vehicles push up and leave just a couple back here. What I'm saying is that you can make an aggressive maneuver like this as long as you have fire support, it will be absolutely fantastic because you can spot the enemy and you can be certain that you will get fire support because it's the only thing that I can shoot at. That's basically the mentality that I'm taking towards cat defense here. I know that I can exploit that range line with my seven degrees of gun depression. And if I get to that hill, I might be talking a bit ahead of myself here. I think I still need a second at this point to consider what I'm going to do, but our E100 is just hit the dust back there. And that's the point where I just say to myself, okay, I've got to make this maneuver. I've got to push really aggressively. Our sixth sense goes off hit there, but we know what we have to do. We need to infest this lunch line because we need to stop these very skilled medium tank players from outplaying our guys in the cap circle. We need to harass them, we need to be very, very annoying. We've got two people in the cap. That affords 40 seconds to the enemy team. The enemy are going to be feeling pressured at this point, and the more things you can give them to think about, the better it will be. And at this point, I've got health. I've got 1,950 hit points, yet another advantage of the conch. Whereas the M1, M1 only has 1,850, I'm sitting here with 100 more than that. And so at this point, I think it's the time to spend them. So we push straight over, not giving two fudges that we might get shot by all their medium tanks. And we slam a shot into the 216, we get a fire out of it, bouncing a heat shell from the E100 off of our turn and attempting to turn fire ourselves. T49 is just blazing back towards the cap. I'm just reversing, hope, hoping not to take a shot on the E100 again. And you can see the kind of line that we formed across the map here. I know that I'm not going to have trouble from the flanks because if anything shoots me from up there, it's going to get harassed to hell by the TDs there. So I know that my flank is secure. All I need to really focus on is tanks coming from this way and tanks on the opposite side of the hill there. So, not really that concerned about the T-49 anymore. I know that he is going to die if he keeps going the way he's going. We put out a shot that the M1 takes him out first. And I'm looking over to that E-100 and thinking, he is just there to spot to harness the cap. And he is a very, very good player. And he knows, and I know, that his objective is the cap circle. So, I spend the majority of my time on this lunch line not even concerned about him. Well, I am concerned about him, but I'm not paying him as much heed as you might expect. Because I know that he's going to be having loads of issues with the cap circle. And I know that the enemy are still getting resets off on our two tier 10 heavy tanks and that is not acceptable i need to push forward i need to spot these guys i need to use my health i need to die if it's what i need to do to spot these guys and to dig them out so i'm pushing forward using my seven degrees of gun depression using my tank armor using the fact that the enemy have more than one thing to think about they are trying to interrupt the cap and i'm not even giving two fudges that i'm getting shot from the flank here i know that these guys need to die, they need to be being harassed constantly, they need to be punished for what they are attempting to do to our cap circle, I need to keep the damage singing, I need to harass them and I need to make sure that they have 
as many problems trying to defend the cap as possible. You can see, thanks to our spots there, the Obja 140 gets taken out by the Waffle Alf E100. And again, aggression, 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 aggression. I want to make sure that I can't just sit back here sniping into the cap circle. I don't care that I'm exposing myself. I know exactly what I need to do. You see the Amex 30B dies to our spots as well. You can see how, how well this maneuver worked. It was an absolutely amazing play, if I do say so myself. We knew exactly what we needed to do, and we used positional superiority and tactical superiority and aggression. The fact that we are heavy tank, we have good gun depression, we knew our capabilities. We used that to harass enemy medium tanks, which were in potentially a strong position, were it not for our work there. If we were not here, the enemy would have won this game. There is no doubt about that, because I would have massacred our guys in cap. I, I, speculative as to where I would have been, let's say, let's say I was done as well and pushed up there. Hold down the 100 there, medium tank shooting from stealth there. Our team's dead. They are all dead. This one manoeuvre, and it's as I always say, position is so important. 50 metres, 10 metres can change it. Your attitude can change it. And I just love the fact that in this game we recognised the fact that the enemy were feeling pressured. They, they didn't have time to engage me. That E100 doesn't have time to turn around and shoot me. He's got to focus on interrupting the cap. And we exploited that to the best of our ability. And that was so satisfying to do in this game as we see there. And are you 251 lambing? A buff and trying to get off E100. The clue is in the name, buddy. If it has E100 in it, probably it's something you don't want to ram. You seeing the 5.71 rounds per minute here? Really shining. I don't think I can last the RS4 on the flank at that point until then. But my focus is on this E100, and we are loading premium here. Not really necessary. But uh, pen one on the side, and that that is another note that's uh, very important, especially from a situation like this. That the Conqueror with its 259 base pen, it gets APCR shells as its ammunition, which in my opinion is better. Although APCR shells generally will have lesser penetration than their heat counterparts, they are better. They travel faster from the air, they get normalisation against angled surfaces, and they also perform... They actually pen spaced armour, unlike heat shells. The heat shells on the M1 and Pony, which I believe have 330 or 340 millimetres of pen, if I was firing them at this E100 here, I would not have the freedom to shoot anywhere. At this point on the E100, 120 millimetres, of side hull armour covered in space, and it's 150mm of side turret armour. I can more or less shoot him anywhere with this 259 base pen, and I will pen him. And the same is true with the M1, M103 with its 258. However, if we were to fire premium, the APCR means that I could shoot him there and pen him. But with the M103, I would need to specifically aim to avoid space armor, which would mean I'd have a far smaller target to shoot at. And with the .27 accuracy on the M103, which is a major letdown, especially in stark comparison to the Conqueror, I don't think I'd feel as confident as I do right now of taking the C100 to pieces at long distance. It starts to angle out his armor here, and we're not interested in squandering the shot that we know is not going to pen. Now Dystonia there really costing us that shot, as you can see, we were aimed perfectly, but a little jarring movement to the right costs us more damage. And the IS-4 is firing heat, but at this stage of the game, highly excusable. At this point, I, I'm not sure whether it's my Dystonia or just sheer and utter hypeness. You see, 0.33 accuracy. 
this gun is glorious. This has got to be the best gun at tier 9 on any heavy tank, without a doubt in my mind. Now I know there's a Hess shell uh, to deal with the, I the E100 to find that IS-7 connect there. And it's something that's also worth pointing out, the high explosive shells on this tank are Hesh, they have 120mm of pen, and they have two 515 alpha damage. That is amazing. The Hesh shells on this tank are worth their weight in gold. And so we pop over, still with a Hesh shell loaded, um, onto this IS-4, just slam one anywhere on this tank. And weighing 66 tonnes, the Conqueror, with a 950 horsepower engine and a 34.3 km an hour top speed limit, that is 0.3 higher than the M1, M103, which caps out at 34. You can get some fairly good lands off in this vehicle, despite its front armor being considerably weaker than most of the other tier 9 heavies. Gentlemen, hopefully you've learned something from this from this gameplay review. It was a stellar performance by all involved in this game. It was a very high skill cap game, and it was one that was very enjoyable to play. Both teams played very, very well. Um, our team made a very good aggressive maneuver, and that was the only reason that I was like, eventually able to make a maneuver that I think won the game. And JDEG holding base like an absolute boss with his uh, friends up there, the Vuffle and the E4. Just, just a fantastic game, just well done to all involved. That was absolutely fantastic. Gentlemen, hopefully you have enjoyed the gameplay, and until next time, I will bid you a very fond farewell. You like that? Right, mother... That's a really, really <laughs> How are you? I can see the stars and I am doing anus. <laughs> Lol. Oh, come on! Oh. We got all the kills, guys. 15 kill game. Incoming! Oh, awesome. Dude! Well done, well done. Dude!